Do you remember when Michael Jackson saying, I believe that children are our future, teach them well and let them lead the way. There is this push in our community to have children be at the forefront of our decision making. They're kinder, they're nicer, they're more sensible than we adults are. And so let them lead, let them take power, let them run the country. And in one sense, yes, children are the future and we should teach them well. But we're warned today about the danger of the inexperienced and the naive, uh, which certainly applies to children, but it applies to many other people as well. We're in Proverbs chapter 14, as we continue to see the wisdom that God gave Solomon which to give to us. And so Proverbs chapter 14, and we pick it up at verse 15. The inexperienced one believes anything, but the sensible one watches his steps. A wise person is cautious and turns from evil. But a fool is easily angered and is careless. A quick-tempered person acts foolishly, and one who schemes is hated. The inexperienced inherit foolishness, but the sensible are crowned with knowledge. And so he talks about the inexperienced. There's a few groups of people in there, but he talks in a couple of those uh, proverbs about the inexperienced, which comes across that idea of naive of not having thought about it, not wise, they're, they're just fresh. Uh, and so that, you know, that applies to lots of people in this world, uh, but kids are part of them. And, and what does he say about the inexperienced and the naive? They believe anything. It's interesting if you look at the formation of beliefs for uh, children and youth under uh, about eight years old, children will just believe anything their parents say. And then there's a shift towards late primary school to the primary authority figure in their life being their teacher. Uh, in their teens, it becomes their peers. Uh, which is interesting and problematic for a bunch of reasons. And then later they learn to make up their own mind. And by about 28, uh, people are quite set, their minds are fairly rigid, uh, and uh, they, they've worked out what they're going to work out about life. Now, that's not to say that God can't change people and people can't grow and change and learn things afterwards, but there's this, um, you know, we, we're very, very plastic beforehand. Uh, and then invaluable. And that's why he says the inexperienced one believes anything. You can tell anything to someone who's naive or someone who's very young and they will believe it, especially if you look at them serious and say, no, no, no this, is, this is absolutely true, right? Then they will just go your way. It's one of the interesting phenomena about school and when there is change of uh, policy and uh, agendas pushed in schools that uh, children will believe anything so they are then spouting what the agenda has been put on them uh, and you see that in all kinds of ways so the inexperienced one what believes anything but the sensible one watches his steps and what Solomon is calling us to do what God is calling us to do is to be sensible to think about everything to observe to hear both sides of the argument, uh, to uh, be, be rational about it, not just led by impassioned pleas and emotion, but to sit down and go, what is right? What is right when it comes to God's word? What is right when it comes to life and, and what's being promoted in so many ways? He moves on to say, a wise person is cautious and turns from evil. And so the person who is sat down and thought about it and, and knows what's right and wrong and so on will turn away from evil. That is true wisdom. But the fool is easily angered and is careless, right? The one who is persuaded because they're naive that they're, that, that, that any, this is right and that's wrong when they haven't really uh, thought about it from God's perspective is going to be impetuous. The part of the inexperience is going to be uh, ex come out as uh, just easily um, emotionally led, right? Their, their emotional brain leads their thinking brain and they, they, they explode, right? And they're careless. They don't think about the consequences. And then he talks about the being quick-tempered, a quick-tempered person then acts foolishly. And so you get this vicious cycle where you're, right, you're easily angered and you just go off and do stupid things. You say things you shouldn't have said. You go and make decisions impromptu that uh, you shouldn't make. Uh, worse than that, though, is someone who schemes. They are hated, <laughs> he says. Right There's, there's the thoughtful person who's uh, actually scheming evil and plotting and planning against uh, other people and, and they're hated. 
So he comes then back to naivety, the inexperienced inherit foolishness, but the sensible are crowned with knowledge. Right, in the end, the person who's just easily led, doesn't think about it, um, and uh, is easily swayed uh, by everyone, they will end up living very foolishly, acting very foolishly, they inherit foolishness, right? And uh, uh, it's really, really sad. But he says, you know, the sensible way of life, the third person who's thoughtful and wise, who, you know, doesn't just accept everything at face value instantly, but but works on it. What does that all mean for us? Well, it means that we need to think things through, but also in the raising of our kids, we need to help them to shape them and go, well, hey, let's think about that, right? We've just seen this in this movie, is that okay? You've heard this from school, you're coming back and, and saying this is gospel truth. Well, what, let, let's think about it. What does that, the implications of that? What does God have to say on those matters? You know, you know your, your friends, okay, oh, I saw this in the media. I mean, we saw this uh, in all kinds of ways with um, uh, the royal wedding <coughs> when, uh, you know, the next day all kinds of people came to say, wasn't that so wonderful and such a wonderful gospel sermon? <laughs> it was like, well, it was an anti-gospel sermon, right? He talked about love and the power of love and so on, but that wasn't Christian love that he was talking about. He was okaying a whole range of behaviors and tolerances that, that God's not for, right, that are unloving when we go that way. Uh, and so it's really hard you got to learn to be discerning, right? To think, okay, not just what are the words coming out of people's mouths, but but what's the intent behind them? Can I see it? Can I measure it against the the broad range of their teaching and so on from from other places, right? Just to not accepting things at face value. The inexperienced are always in danger, right? Of inheriting foolishness, of believing anything. And Solomon really cares about us. God really cares about us. He wants us not to be like that, but to test everything, right? We're meant to test the spirits. We're to be discernment. That's something, if you're worried about it, you can pray for discernment, that ability to be able to judge things. You don't have to be learned. You don't have to have multiple degrees in order to test the spirits and be discerning, right? You need to have a good handle of God, have a good relationship with him. And uh, also, I mean, talk to talk to your Christian brothers and sisters about stuff as well. Why don't we pray that we would not be naive and that our children wouldn't be either. Father, we pray please that you help us to flee from naivety and just accepting whatever's said in the media, uh, out for their kids at school, with uh, from their friends, for our teenagers and their friends who are easily led by peer group pressure. Father, help us not to be like that. Uh, help us to be sensible, to be thinking out what are your ways, to be reading your word and, and applying it to our lives. We pray that we wouldn't be this naive, inexperienced people who just believe anything and act very, very foolishly, inherit foolishness. Help us not to be schemers either and help us not to be easily led by emotions and you know, easily angered and explode. Help us to be calm, to be thoughtful, to be reflective, that we might make wise and godly decisions to your praise and glory, that we may bring benefit to other people as well. We might be uh, real uh, leaders in the way to behave, in the way to live, in the way to look to you. Please, Lord, direct our steps in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless everyone. Catch you for another devotion tomorrow.